Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi there. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2 again with my partner, Art Kirsch, and our good friend and expert medical advice type person, Dr. Liz Lister. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good to see you. You know, we just uh, uh, had a conversation about how to bring your sexy back for women. Uh, Is there any hope for us guys? Do you have any advice for us or are we just a lost cause? Of course not a lost cause. Absolutely. Uh Absolutely. Thanks to the tango art. Oh, yeah. So what do we we guys got to do besides just, you know, survive every day? Well, I love talking with men. I love helping men feel better. It's actually, you guys are actually a little more straightforward than us women. You may have noticed that. But even also from a hormonal standpoint. So, for example, we have, we women, I mean, men men and women have all kinds of hormones in common, of course. But for you as men, testosterone gives a really wonderful comprehensive benefit in so many ways in terms of how you feel and how your brains are working and also since we're talking about bringing sexy back we're talking about libido and motivation and drive and as i'm always repeating that libido is not only about sex it's also about it, it encompasses sex it includes sex but it's also motivation and drive and it really gives that uh, wonderful feeling of life is great and let's let's go get them. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of interesting that uh, women seem to have all, all these uh, articles and uh, they have you and uh, we had a fascinating conversation just a, a short while ago about uh, what women can do. But for guys, basically, uh, you watch Frank Thomas with his, his ads on television, you text something in your in your cell phone as a message. And that's what you do to get your sexy back. Is there anything else besides uh, uh, TV commercials uh, with the uh, former sports uh, figures? Well, there's a lot, actually. Uh, besides, you know, you, we've all we've talked about hormone replenishment many times. And so we have other uh, segments that we've done on that. And so today we're looking really more at more natural ways. There are some that are lifestyle choices and some that are different herbs. So I thought that would be interesting for us to talk about. The, herbs. Oh, let me touch briefly. Yeah, before we get into the herbal ingredients, because those are kind of interesting. The, if the research is, the research on supplements is not fantastic, but it is very, very interesting. Uh, but there's also the lifestyle choices. So for men also, it's important for sleep to be in good shape. Okay, so if, I mean, you you tell me, but really if if you're tired, it's, not you're not going to get your best body function out of yourself okay almost in any arena and sex is not an exception less alcohol i didn't say zero alcohol but less alcohol is also going to be helpful in terms of sexual function and also less stress doing whatever you can to decrease stress in your life going to help your health and it's going to help your motivation and your libido uh, including in terms of sex and sexual function. For men, I think there's there's a, uh, particularly as we get older, I, I don't know how to put it exactly, but there's a need to feel manly. Um, mm. For some people, it's uh, sports or uh, uh, working out of the gym. Uh, for other people, it's other things. But um, I think it's related to maybe a drop in testosterone um, the hormone that you're trying to um, supplement or counteract by becoming doing manly things, whatever that is. Yes, uh, and that that yeah. might be the lifestyle that you're talking about. Absolutely, I, I think it even actually does short bursts of testosterone. Doing exercise definitely helps. I, when you mention that, that that's what I thought of. So I think that's definitely true. No question about it. What other lifestyle uh, suggestions do you have for men to bring their libido up? 
Okay. Well, also, so libido and also having good, satisfying, intimate experiences is paying attention to the relationship. This is obviously important for women and men, but also I'm doing a shout out to the men, especially, uh, that that might be something that you think that uh, your partner is in charge of. Uh, so you want to focus on that and do what you can, learn more, and also focusing on the non direct sexual part of intimacy. Uh, so for example, people talk about focusing on foreplay and also the word, uh, people are mostly familiar with the word intercourse, but not so much with the word outer course. So that's all of the, the sensory stimulation and being with your partner. And that's also going to help the cause for sure. Yeah. And, and okay. so the relationship is very important. Very important. And, very, and very... Men, men are notorious for uh, ignoring the relationship. You think? Indeed. <laughs> Particularly yes. compared to women. Cor yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, yes, notorious, exactly right. Uh, not always deserved, uh, but definitely that's kind of the, uh, the reputation. Okay, so there's that. And then there's also a whole lot of really interesting herbal ingredients, which is, of course, part of a multi-billion dollar supplement industry a lot of doctors kind of frown upon supplements but i don't i think they're very fascinating there's a lot of research from around the world with some really really interesting herbal ingredients like i thought we could talk about that too good because there is so much on the shelf and yes. there are so many commercials and advertisements for supplements uh to boost your testosterone you know that kind of thing I, do those testosterone boosters really work? Can you boost your testosterone safely. in that manner? Safely. Yes, yes. Okay, so first of all, what I always tell men is that I am I really don't think there's any downside to trying different supplements that are out there that purport to produce or boost testosterone production, okay? So other than, you know, if you're sticking with a, a, a source a seller that you can talk with if you have any issues. You know, people talk about the supplement industry not being well regulated. It's regulated as a food. So the products, it's not that they're unsafe. They just haven't all been tested for effectiveness. Does that make sense, that difference? Sure, sure. So that's the first thing that I always tell men about supplements. A couple of the very interesting herbal ingredients that I've come across in my work as a hormone specialist talking with men a lot about this topic. Uh, one of them is called Yohimbin. Yohimbin. Okay. And this is from West Africa. And it actually it works similarly to Viagra. All right. So it's a vasodilator and seems to help with sexual function. Okay. Uh, another one that has been uh, said to boost testosterone specifically is called Tribulus. Tribulus. I can. I'll send you a list so that you can, we can have these. You can put them in the description box. That's for a good idea because I'm trying to write these segment. down. Yeah, right. yeah, that'd be well, great. Actually, you were googling me. I saw you uh, on the monitor googling <laughs> <laughs> these, John, right away. And yes. did you hit the the, the uh, add to the cart and send? Uh, I, I want to uh, say. I, I, I actually do. Well, before we go up this further, it's fascinating. Is that? Uh, uh, I, I had said about safety issues uh, because here we're having a general conversation, but uh, somebody should at least be seeing a doctor uh, periodically, at least once a year, to find out if they have some kind of conditions that might have a negative effect if you started taking some of these supplements so that I'm always concerned that uh, people hear about this and say, oh yeah, well I can take plenty of melatonin or uh, as came up another se segment, DHEA, and it's all safe. Well, yes, is it? Yes. And, 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 and should people be speaking to a professional medical uh, uh, person who knows something about their uh, uh, conditions? This, the phrase that uh, you're making me think of is what we call margin of safety. The margin of safety. And I honestly think, Art, that with most supplements, the margin of safety is very high. Now, I have to tell you, I came across a supplement in my 
medical doctor. I'm on a lot of email lists. And this one actually made me chuckle. It's not actually funny, but it made me chuckle. It was a supplement. It was being sold as a supplement. It got pulled from the market by the FDA because it was found to have some uh, of a Viagra actual medicine component in it that they didn't put on the label. So they were actually selling the medication itself the way they do in other countries without a prescription. So, you know, it just shows that to me, it says that doctors need to keep learning about these types of supplements because people want them. People want help. Okay. And I, I do think the margin of safety is quite big. There's a couple others I want to be sure to mention that I want to do a shout out that you've probably heard of. What is called a uh, ginkgo biloba. You right. heard about it from a brain standpoint. Okay. Also ginseng. These increase energy. They increase blood supply, blood flow. Okay. And maca. Maca is considered, it's also nicknamed Peruvian ginseng uh, and even garlic. Okay. Now all of these, and, and I want to say one thing about the research. So there is a lot of research. So most medical doctors, at least in the U.S., don't realize that most supplements have extensive research. It might be published in nutrition journals. It might be published in other countries. But they say, oh, those aren't regulated. Those aren't researched. That's not true. They are very, very researched. And a lot of times if they research the herb, the herbal ingredient, and they do a true experiment where that's the only ingredient they're using, maybe they're not going to find an effect. Whereas when you do them in combination, you might actually find an effect. That's one of my, yeah, it's very interesting. And so I definitely do not discount a variety of different natural supplements to help with libido. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Um, I think Art m made a good point, though, and that is, you know, you're saying yes. from the nutritional uh, point of view, there's a margin of safety that's pretty wide. Mm -hmm. But Art was saying we're all individuals. We're right. all, we don't know, you know, we, I, in one of our more recent videos, we talked about allergies, how everybody can have a different allergic response to the same thing or not have an allergic response. And I think that's what Art's point was, and that yeah. is none of us really know our bodies and how we're going to react to any given supplement. And it's always wise, always wise to see your doctor and run it past the doctor and say, what yes. do you think about this? I, I, For instance, I love fish oil. And I was talking to my doctor the other day, and I said, well, can I go back on my fish oil? He said, absolutely. It's great mm -hmm. for the heart. Meanwhile, another doctor Good. had said, uh, and, well, he didn't say, they said, stop the fish oil because it thins the blood. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that was for a particular situation. I'm going in for a test. They don't want a blood thinner. Right, uh, right. That's right. But in both cases, you know, the medical profession had something to say about it. And it, it's relating yeah. to me. It's not relating to the world in general. So I, yeah. I appreciated that. I think that's. Art, you made a good point before. And I think everybody should love do it. that. Always consult. I love it. Absolutely. What do you got to lose? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, John, you just made me think of a phrase uh, from a doctor who I read a lot of her work. Uh, she talks about the tail wagging the dog. So mm -hmm. you just mentioned two doctors who are aware of the influence of fish oil. That's good. They get, they get credit. They get brownie points for being aware of that. <laughs> Whereas in generations gone by, it's like, oh, it's a supplement. It doesn't do anything. Right. So right. luckily they've both learned the different types of effects. So it doesn't exactly thin the blood. That's a good topic for another time. We could talk all about that. Uh, and so that, that way people are aware uh, and they can have good educated conversations with their doctors and even educate their doctors. Yes. And uh, do, do you know of any... Uh... Uh, like WebMD or something like that, that might have a section on uh, supplements that would have at least a general guideline as to, uh, boy, you really shouldn't take this if uh, you have an arrhythmia, or you shouldn't take this if you have bone cancer, or, or this or that. Are there anything like that, or you just 
have to rely on a medical professional? I, I'm going to say none of the above, Art. Mm. To the you, you talked about web a particular website versus relying on medical professionals. So I wouldn't rely on medical professionals because again, we're not taught a lot about it. We're even taught that there isn't good research, whereas there that's not true. There is. Okay. And then of course the internet, you know, I have a, a meme that I use in a lot of my presentations, and it says, Don't confuse your Google search with my medical degree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But that's but good. that's you know that's it's meant to be funny. But what I also want to say is what I personally say is I've never seen anybody go on the internet and feel better. Yeah. So the answer <laughs> to your question is yes. There are many websites they do talk about it. However, they're going to give you all the possible bad things that could happen. Okay. Versus how often does it actually happen? Yeah. So I I'll look into that. I'll look into see where do I particularly go. I, honestly, I, when I look up a supplement, I'm looking more at who makes it, where is it made. That's really more what I'm looking at. Is it yeah. pharmaceutical grade uh, versus is it made by Costco and is it sold, you know, next to the tires and the <laughs> dishes? The, the, the and now, I have confidence in the tire department. So if they sold supplements tires, there, yes. I wouldn't be asking these questions because <laughs> Costco, with the nitrogen they put in the tires, they uh, tell me a, a Costco tire supplement. I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're the you got more expertise in that area than I do. So I'll talk about supplements. You talk about tires. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and don't knock Costco supplements because I um many many years ago I worked in a meat factory, and uh, on the night shift and the meat factory, uh, made, what do they call it? The brand house brands. So they would make hot dogs and pastrami and fill in the brand of meat. Yeah. They would package it. They would cook it, package it, slaughter, do everything. But they'd package it into a brand, anybody who pay them. So you, right. you've got a grocery store, they put your brand on it. It's the same stuff you bought with the meat factory's brand. So when you go to Costco and those things, you need to research this to find out. But when you go to a, a, a large store like, um, well, even grocery stores have their house brands, right? Mm -hmm. For fruits and veg, for, not for fruits, but for canned goods and things. Um, you can research to find out who makes it for them. Because you know that um, the Shopwell store doesn't make their own canned vegetables. Right, And right, you know right. that Costco doesn't make their own canned or bottled supplements. Somebody's right. making it for them. And usually... Quite frankly, usually it's the biggest manufacturers out there. Um, why? Because they can afford to do that. So anyway, it's, but the bottom line that we've been talking about is research. You've got to be a responsible yes. uh, citizen, a responsible patient. You've got to research a, because, you, as you pointed out, some of the doctors know, some of the doctors don't. Right. We can't trust websites. Some of them are legit. Some of them aren't. We don't know, but we, we got can to... trust. We can trust Dr. Liz, and I think uh, for me, one of the uh, most revealing uh, and important uh, uh, things that I uh, learned today was a margin of safety, uh, mm -hmm. which is why you have confidence in many uh, supplements, so long as you have um, a confidence in the manufacturer right. that it's. Uh, uh, professional grade uh, products as opposed to something that just got thrown together in somebody's little yeah. lab. Well, for me, the most important thing I got today mm -hmm. was the natural, um, uh, 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 the natural ways we can boost our libido. In, and I'm going back to before you started talking about supplements, uh, getting into the relationship. Yeah. And that um, the relationship attitude, because men tend to not worry about the relationship. With women, nurture the relationship. So I, that's my takeaway. My takeaway is, men, you want to boost your libido or her libido, <laughs> start worrying about the relationship. Take care of it and nurture. Love it. So who yeah. knew that there would be so much uh, to discuss on getting your sexy back for guys? Yeah. Yeah, awesome job.
Good. Well, um, I've made notes, by the way. Thank you. Good. <laughs> well, Dr. I'll, Liz, we'll I'll check with you later, John. Okay. Dr. Liz, we will see you soon with another fascinating discussion on who knows what. Look, I'll look forward to it. Okay. Thanks a lot. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.